Oh my fucking god. This goddamn pressure in my head that makes me feel like I'm going to feel like a like lot That fills my mind with all sorts of terrifying what ifs. This goddamn pressure in my goddamn right goddamn motherfucking goddamn ear. None of y'all goddamn motherfuckers give a goddamn fuck enough to get goddamn help with goddamn it. Well, Chris, do you think about being ornery and being such a filthy mouth speaker? Why in the hell? That's not the way to get people to give. You stupid motherfucker. If I did it the right way, I'd really get the big goddamn goose egg. Being like this has made me what little famous I am the goddamn motherfucking day. Being a jack, being an ungodly, blasphemous curse got me discovered by Mark Blackwell, who's now shooting a documentary on my life for the Sundance Festival. Yes, if I, if I had been all good and godly and accepted the shitty hand I had been given, I'd still be a nobody today. Being like I, being a blasphemous, ornery, motherfucking cuss, got me on MTV and made me a little town celebrity here in Kissing. In fact, I was in Watts last year, and somebody who lived in Watts recognized me and asked for my motherfucking autograph. No fucking shit. I live on here on the motherfucking East Coast. It's featured on NTV, and I, I'm getting recognized on the motherfucking West Coast. West Coast. None of that motherfucking shit would have happened if I had not been a blasphemous, ungodly cuss who makes sailors blush shame from, from the way I'm motherfucking cuss. None of that would have happened. Oh, and some direct benefits from meeting Mark Blackwell. I got a free consultation with Dr. Richard Fleming about hair flap surgery and find out I'm a viable candidate. Deposit a little over $12,000. Now, had I by not been putting up Blasphemous, vile videos, that never would have happened. I got my own Doritos commercial, but because I was not a good looking guy, good looking enough, the commercial was brand. Here's the link to the commercial. If only I had been a good looking guy, I had not only made the semifinals, but probably the finals, maybe even the Super Bowl. But hey, people everywhere are telling me they love my Doritos commercial. None of that motherfucking shit would have happened. Had I not been a blasphemous, vile, disgusting, evil, vice filled curse of a motherfucking sailor. No. No, no, I'm not. Sailor, don't call me a sailor. That's, don't disgrace sailors. Don't disgrace the, what you call it. Damn, what's that god motherfucking damn word? Don't disgrace the profession of being a sailor. Sailors blush with shame when they hear me motherfucking cuss. I'm proud of it, god fucking damn it. At least I'm good, good at something. If I can't be good enough at rapping to get a motherfucking song out to the motherfucking nation, I can be good at some motherfucker. Yeah. In 2011, I also got a free two free recording sessions with the engineer of who engineered for the band R.E.M. You remember the band R.E.M.? Back in the 80s, shiny, ha shiny, happy people holding hands. Every, everybody hurts. I'ma sell my soul if I can't sing to sing again. And be a young looking guy. Yeah, that would not, never have come to fruition if I'd have been a good kid. So, only the good die young. Good guys finish last. Nice guys don't finish. Period. That's what I was. A nice guy. Oh, you are a nice guy. The girls would say, "Fuck you." What does nice mean? Nice is not even proper grammar. It's colloquial. And Mark 
this St. Mark bike road took me to a karaoke place where I was one of the only four or five black and white people there. And guess what? I won the motherfucking hundred dollar motherfucking prize for the motherfucking karaoke when I got up on the stage and motherfucking saying Dr. Motherfucking Dre and motherfucking Snoop no, motherfucking Doggy Dog's motherfucking song nothing but a motherfucking G motherfucking ding goddammit motherfucker. That would not have happened if I didn't constantly unleash streams of profanity like I just motherfucking did there motherfucker. Don't you dare pray I change. I invoke my motherfucking free free will. I demand my reward here. I don't give a goddamn about heavenly rewards. I ain't lost nothing up there. That I'd be willing to for a god. God is love, but this loving God hates sinners. Not just the sin. There's absolutely nothing. This motherfucker can give me that can replace my motherfucking three dreams. I almost hope, I almost hope this God is not true, if that's the God he has to be. Even if that means when I die, that's it, lights out, game over. Because I hate this, I hate such a God, I hate, I literally hate him. I can understand now where, how everybody in the world would be an enemy of God when they find out that God hates them for something they had no control over. Hell, I didn't fucking eat the food of the fucking motherfucking treat of uh, uh, life. You would have if you would had been there. But if if ads and butts were candy dust, we'd all have a merry motherfucking Christmas. So fuck you. That's not good enough. I didn't have to be born in this world with three strikes against me. If Chris, it was only one original sin. Yeah, but the three. God the Father strike one. God the Father Son strike two. God the Father Holy Spirit strike motherfuckers three. You're out, motherfucker. You are down and out, and you're gonna go to hell. And God's gonna hate you all the way. Now, some of you will walk out of here tonight shocked. You'll say, I've never heard anything like that. You'll say, he was mean-spirited, all sorts of things. But I can assure you, if you would only read old books, you would find out this is what preachers have always said. They don't say it anymore because they want big churches. Now let me talk for a moment about something that will be quite offensive to you. I want to talk a moment about the hatred of God. Not only is He an angry God, He is a God who hates. The Bible does not say that God hates the sin and loves the sinner. The Bible says God hates the sinner. God hates you. He will hate you with a perfect hatred. He will hate you and He will have you. That is the fearsomeness of hell. The text we read says that those in hell, they are going to be tormented. Where? In the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. Let me give you another example. Heaven is heaven because God is there. Well, that is, most, that is true. But then the counter is not true. Hell is hell because God's not there. That's not what Scripture teaches. Hell is the wrath of Almighty God. It is His perfect justice revealed against men throughout an eternity. One of the most fearful things about hell is not the total absence of God, the absence of all of His blessings. Yes, can you imagine forevermore with not any joy, no more comfort, but God is going to be there. One of the fearful things about God, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. He is a consuming fire. And when He sets His face against you, He will trample you out in the winepress of His wrath. And it is forever. Fuck you. I will be a rat's ass I to remember something else. That be a blasphemous, foul, foul mouthed kid has got me because I've had appeared on MTV and reruns because people have seen my Doritos commercial and because com that added coupled with the fact that I rap karaoke and after I rap in places. Sure, I have to pay the cover charge the first time I get in, but after that, after the hair, hear me right, I used to before I had this goddamn stroke, they'd stop charging me the cover charge. 
Well, every time I go in the city, people are constantly calling, screaming out my name, Flip! Girls have told me, ask to get the picture take, taken with me. A good looking girl. In fact, this girl here in Greenville saw me. She called me over. She let me measure her arm. She even said the words during the conversation, I love you. Now, I would not have gotten any of this glorious stuff that makes life worth living. Had I been a good kid, kept it clean, not used cuss words, no, 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 no. So why the fuck? Oh, Chris, you're gonna go, going to go to hell. Well, if God's like this, heaven is hell to me. I'd rather get live in my heaven now and burn in hell than kiss the ass of God like this. And give up my most precious dreams only to have to go to heaven and lick his asshole and brown brown tongue, brown nose him. I demand from God to be loved as much as he loves himself. And if he can't, if he can't meet that man, I know he's probably more powerful me than me, I, but I got make me feel good about myself to say this. And fuck him and the horse he rides on and the throne he sits on. I curse such a God. I curse him in the name of love, real love, and humanity. Let me tell you, motherfucker. So why you tell me why the fuck I should stop being such a blasphemous, ungodly cuss? Look at what it's got. It's, it's got me more. In a few years, when I used to be a godly, righteous person, got me in over 20 years, motherfucking years. So fuck you. Let me tell you a true story. Not club and karaoke joints have a tendency to give me free ginger ale. And this makes me feel good about myself. I know it's an illusion, and just an illusion. But I can trick myself into believing that they're doing it because they think I'm a good looking guy. Well, I, I can sing good. But there is this karaoke spot in Newburn. They didn't play ball with me. They charged me. They, they wanted to charge me for my ginger ale. The waitresses did not compliment, the bartenders did not compliment me on my singing. In fact, nobody did there, like they did in Greenville. So I got really fucking pissed off. And I wrote a nasty ass letter and put it in one of the bartenders' tip jars. I, someone all else almost got arrested. What saved his ass when I got home, I called and telephoned to rub their noses in it. But like a dumbass, me and I went with my friends back to the place a few weeks later or whatever, and the bartenders, who, whom I wrote the letter to, came and bitched me out. She said, Some, a friend of mine almost got arrested for that, somebody. Well, after she bitched me out, you know what happened? Where's the miracle? She gave, gave me a ginger ale. She said, this is on the house. Now you tell me why in the goddamn fuck I should start doing it the, the godly way. When when I was a godly person, it didn't give me shit. You don't tell me about this war in heaven bullshit. I don't give a goddamn. There's nothing in heaven. I ain't lost much, nothing in heaven. I don't give a damn if all this is gonna be. I've nothing compared to what's in heaven. It's all I got now. And god damn it, while I got it, and god damn it. I will have it. I don't care how many throats I'm going to cut. I don't care how many times I'm going to cheat. Because nobody loves me enough because I'm, I'm not a good looking guy enough. I will do what? I will step on as many heads as it takes. Look, if I only had my three dreams, it's a good looking guy, had the long arms, and I could have this look in my 20s. God had 20 years to give it to me. And didn't give a shit. But rejected by the girls. I thought I fucking got and hit on by he gave me a got he gave me a lot of opportunities to have many sexual liaison liaisons with gay people, gay guys. But this is what I get for being godly. For 
being right. I want to be wrong, sinful, and most ungodly. And at the last minute, change my ways and get into heaven by the skin of my motherfucking teeth. Because see, you see, God only cares, mo care God cares most about what pleases Him the most. So why the fuck should I? Not? Ain't we supposed to be like God? There was something else I was going to say. This goddamn pressure. Is it here? 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 Look, do I have to get a motherfucking pistol out? Put it to my motherfucking tip and blow my brains out. Blow this fucking excruciating, distress, pressure, nauseating pressure out of my fucking head. Because God damn it, the more I talk about it, the closer I'm gonna get to finally just say, fuck it, man. When I went to jail, I did a lot of talking to God. I feel something different about me, so maybe I am born again. Now, I just hope there is life after death, but I have to be prepared for it. Nothing this, just in case. I believe I will commit suicide one day eventually. I, I believe I will be able to work myself up into frenzy to do it. And I hope you all have to feel your consciousness kill you for not having given me the stem cells. Only eighty-nine motherfucking hundred dollars, fifty thousand at the most. You know how easy it would be for a huge amount of people to give me that much money and never miss a more than a quarter. I can't panhandle out because I'm too. I feel too lightheaded to panhandle. Now, it looks like I'm gonna have to just suck it up and start panhandling again. I panhandled 50 cents from the the chef, not the chef deputy, not I I panhandled from the sheriff. No, it was a no deputy. I panhandled from the muffins from, from the sheriff. You better be careful how you not talk about your shell, sheriff. You better not call him anything, even in jest. He's powerful. And he gave me two quarters. I panhandled from the, the sheriff last night. Damn, I'm good. That's bad. That's bad. So, motherfuckers, I will be just as ungodly. And if God is like this, God is love, but this love and God hates. The Bible says, the Bible doesn't say that God hates just the sinner. Sin. The Bible says God hates the sinner. Is this, if this is the kind of God I'm supposed to sacrifice for me, the most dear to me, Fuck, there ain't nothing in heaven I've lost. I've lost. And I would give up. My three dreams down here. I don't give a god fuck they don't last forever. They last long enough so that when I die, the memory, the reality of once upon a time I was a good looking guy, had a long arm in the twenties, will be real forever. And not once God allows that, not even God can they take that back. Or he'll find a way, but... So... You want me to change? You get me feeling healthy again. Well-being. Able to rap again. So I can pay my own way on my own dime. So I can... If I get rejected in the music business, it wasn't because I was a fucking retard. It was goddamn it because I did my goddamn my best, and my best just wasn't good enough, or, or my best would have made it in another time, but not this time. Maybe tomorrow. Clear, righteously, trust in God. Have faith in God. Motherfucker, it's kind of hard to have faith in God. We ain't fucking there for you. We ain't there, ain't there enough for you. This motherfucker love King, this God love King David enough. Let him have a 
different sex appetite, entree. Never the same sex bunny, same night in a year. And he can't give me the long arms that I can cream or oh, have a long arm to those hard arm girls. And me love such a girl like this? You can go fuck yourself. Look at my motherfucking goddamn hair. I need hair transplants. Look at my motherfucking goddamn face. I need fractional CO2 laser. You can't see it, but my motherfucking eyes. I cannot read without motherfucking reading glasses. To be sure, the, in this day, if, if not stem cells, they got something. I want my goddamn 2020 and 2010 bitches back. Why well, I don't want to live. I don't. I know we're gonna get it going, gonna go old and die. I just want to live until that happens. I don't want to have to feel like I'm dying until the day I'm actually motherfucking dying. Is that a motherfucking crime? Life is not fair. But who's in control of life? So God is not fair. So God, I wish I, I, I want to curse you for not giving me the royal flush. But give it people who are just as vile and wicked a royal flush. And their means of getting sexual satisfaction involves actually committing fornication and sinning against you, whereas mine doesn't. Mine just involves the ecstasy and the privacy of my home with the knowledge that my elbow to wrist is longer than those tall, hot, exotic girls like Monica Schnari, Canadian supermodel, and those six foot, six foot one hot girls who are top notch, who when I was in high school, I would have thought were goddesses. They were so much higher up above them than I ever could have hoped to reach one day. But I always fantasized that I would reach that high socially one day. I'll him the horse he rides on, the throne he sits on. I curse such a God. I curse him in the name of love, real love, and humanity. This is Stephanie Cameron. She played Jennifer on Days of Our Lives back in 97. Look at her forearm. Man, I would give anything to know that mine is longer than hers. And then that my arms are longer than hers. But I bet you hers are longer than mine. And you don't know how bad that, that pisses me off that mine are not longer than hers. Not that hers are... It's not that I want her arm to be shorter than mine. It's that I want mine to be longer than hers. Because she looks good with long arms. I would not want her arms to get any shorter. Just mine to be longer. And I'm willing to sell my soul to burn forever for this too. If that's what I have to do. I'm sick of these blue 